Let's listen in as Greg Myers discusses the pioneering changes that Syngenta Group has gone through in 2020, including their expansion in investments and partnerships, how they work with agri-food tech startups, and trends moving forward. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the 2020 Agri-Food Tech Global Investor Summit here from Israel. Uh, we'll start our first uh, fireside chat of the conference with Greg Mayers, the Chief Information and Digital Officer of Syngenta. Hi, Greg. Hi. Happy to have you with us and honored for you to be the first uh, keynote speaker. Uh, let's start off with uh, the fact that Syngenta has gone through a significant or significant changes in 2020 with the creation of the Syngenta Group. Can you tell us about the change and the, its impact on the way you work with startups? Sure, yeah. So earlier this year, we announced um, the formation of Syngenta Group. So it brings together you know, the original two businesses within Syngenta, which was crop protection and seeds. And it brings together uh, assets from uh, several assets, agricultural assets in China. So we've created a business unit dedicated to China, which includes seeds, crop protection, fertilizer, as well as um, we're a retailer, distributor, uh, and we even buy grain in China. So Syngenta Group China is a business unit. And then, of course, uh, we brought on another crop protection business, which is the Adama business, which is uh, actually based in Israel. So yeah. these four business units together uh, represent about 45,000 employees, about $23 billion in sales, which makes us the largest agro-sciences innovator. And um, when you look at Sort of how it's affected you know the way we work with with startups i mean i think a couple of things have happened one is the syngenta had always been uh, very active in the startup community so we have a venture portfolio we invest in companies like Bitech, uh, who's an israeli company that focuses on irrigation management uh, we've always done collaborations with companies like tyrannus another really interesting uh, ag tech startup in israel uh, and of course, we've done several acquisitions. We've done four acquisitions, uh, three of which have been in the last four years, uh, and that's in the ag tech space. Um, and then Adama is um, really a, a leader in working with startups in the ag tech community. So they work with nearly 20 different startups. Many of them are in Israel, and they actually take a market by market approach. So what, what's re really been exciting is I've had a chance to get closer to what we're doing with Adama. And, uh, and it's really exciting some of the partnerships that they've built and, and they actually have a different model than what we were doing at, at Syngenta. So you know, for us, it's been really interesting to bring the two things together because we can blend a combination of organic innovation, but then also really infusing a lot of great ideas through commercial partnerships with startups as well. Very interesting. So, so the, the investment side that, uh, or strategy that uh, Syngenta followed thus far is now complemented by more partnerships? Yeah, exactly. More partnerships with the startup community. Yeah. Very interesting. Now, turning to, to the year that we've all had, 2020 has been the COVID year. Uh, what trends do you see for Actec innovation? And how do, how do you find the COVID to impact that and also the financial markets and uh, lack of stability? Yeah, you know, I think leading up to 2020, the ag tech innovation market, or at least market adoption, has been pretty uneven. And I think there are a lot of, of growers and their advisors that had viewed ag tech maybe as a, a set of solutions looking for problems. But I think what COVID did was it brought, you know, a giant problem uh, that we hadn't seen before. So, you know, if you take, for example, Italy, you know, about 25% of all agricultural production in Italy occur through 370,000 seasonal workers from Romania. Uh, in the U.S., about a third of all the labor that, that works on fruit, veg, and, and nuts uh, actually is seasonal labor that come from outside the United States. So when you had border closures, um, you had real issues in terms of where you were going to get labor. But you know, even being able to get a trusted advisor like a crop consultant or an agronomist, you know, they couldn't it couldn't be in the same truck, you know, walk, driving around the field the way that they used to. Yeah. So we saw, for example, in Brazil, almost a 300% increase in the use of the satellite imaging tools that we have to provide for remote monitoring. And so 
if you can't be with an agronomist in your field, this, the next best thing is for them to get in their inbox every day um, information around how uh, your crop is progressing and, and potential problems. So we've definitely seen what I view as an acceleration of a trend that was already underway, which is beginning to use artificial intelligence and computer vision to augment um, the ability to monitor crops and try to create you know, some intelligence that, that can augment human knowledge around what was happening and it just actually just accelerated that. Very interesting. So basically what you're saying is that COVID has, has accelerated the trends you have seen and followed um, even before 2020. Yeah, that's right. And I, I you know, recently read uh, Shubang from your team, uh, a blog very that was very interesting, trying to discuss the, the fact that innovators, startups that were disrupting were now being disrupted. How do you, do you view this? Yeah, I think that um, probably there's been an evolution of ag tech. Um, I think the first generation was what I would call, you know, pretty standard, you know, sort of data capture tool. So think of it as really any startup uh, that has good talent that can create databases and, and really good looking front end systems that could speak the language of agriculture. But I think what happened is you saw a lot of saturation of, of those companies. And so now when you really look at where ag tech adoption is sort of stuck or where it needs to come over the hump is you know, farmers are, are looking for you know, software to support them. And I think the first generation of the tools, a lot of the time they were spending time supporting the software. So at some point, you know, they're looking to get a better out, more outcome for, for the amount of input they're putting into the data, right? So the next generation of tools we're seeing are ones that are much more based on science and artificial intelligence and being able to predict things as opposed to just capturing a bunch of information and asking farmers to key in a whole lot of information of what their practices are. So I think that they're looking at that balance. And so the startups that are able to more focus on agronomy and phenology and plant health, I mean, these, these kinds of companies that are actually getting deeper into the, the science of, of agriculture, you know, I think are displacing the companies that have, you know, sort of relatively undifferentiated technology other than just being, you know, kind of standard data capture tools. Very interesting. So how, how would you recommend startups to work best with Syngenta? Yeah, well, a lot of people uh, aren't maybe fully aware of what we do. I mean, uh, so we have almost 100 million acres of land uh, in one of our digital agricultural tools. And we're the only company that has digital farming tools in the top four agricultural markets. And we're number one or number two in every one of those markets. Um, now, we talk a lot less than, than others do, mainly because we're not trying to sell software to farmers. This isn't our business model. Yeah. You know, our, our goal is to make sure that we can build agronomic-based decision support tools based on world-class science. And it's our view that over the long run, computer and data science can help get close to the level of human quality around those agronomic decisions and ultimately on-farm execution. And so when we when we work with startups, what we're looking for are companies that share our mission around agronomic-based decision support tools. So these are going to be companies that bring a unique IP relative to being able to uh, predict, recommend, or prescribe something related to a specific crop, a specific disease, or a specific pest in a specific geography. Okay, very interesting. So you, you would say you would be a, a good source for startups to see you as a channel to the market uh, uh, in addition to being a customer? Yeah, very much so. I think that when you think about some of the challenges that, that I see as I work with startups, one of the hardest part for an ag tech startup is to try to scale up the commercial model. And I, I think it's, it's kind of in the beginning a reflex to say, I want to you know, sell my product to farmers. But there are a couple challenges with that. One is, uh, I mean, there are, you know, in, in India alone, hundreds of millions of farmers. Uh, so it's just not something that a direct model scale. So farmers are neither consumers nor are they businesses. And so I think everybody wants to sell subscriptions direct to growers, but, but you have to realize that growers are, are types of people who are doing very concentrated things in a very short window of time. 
So they're really not that interested in managing 30 or 40 different software subscriptions and having to remember 30 different passwords and log in all these different tools. So I think the role of not only input companies like ours, but also CP retailers, seed companies, mm -hmm. other groups that are already providing advice to growers, this is probably the easiest way for ag techs to scale. So I think the, the idea of, of direct makes sense uh, and it's a good reflex, but I think when you, when you think about just the ability to actually reach farmers where they are, um, you know, you, you look at the existing ag, ag business model and you already have a number of people that have direct relationships with farmers or even are working through intermediaries, which for example, we do in the US. Uh, we might work with a company like Nutrient, right? Who, who's one of the biggest retailers in the world. And th that it's that sort of relationship that already exists, where you're you're bringing in software and tools to help augment the process of already buying the products and using the products that they need, you know, as opposed to you know sort of creating all of these different you know one-off scenarios. So I definitely think that uh, a company like Syngenta Group is is really helpful to ag tech startups, not only in helping them. Uh, bring their perfect the product and make sure that it's a good market pick, but but also helping to bring it to market. You know whether that's in some markets where we we go direct, and in some markets where we're working with channel partners who are already the trusted advisors to growers. Excellent. And and when when you look at the Israeli companies you worked with, and also with uh, the ones that Adama worked with, uh, why why is Israeli innovation landscape so interesting for Syngenta? Um, as you see it. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with the culture, right? I mean, there's a reason why Israel is called a startup nation. It's a, it's a culture that's one of resilience. Um, they have a history of unstoppability, right? There's the word chutzpah. Um, and I think that angle brings a certain level of risk appetite where they, they can be leaders um, in, in failing fast, taking risks and, and really trying to hit home runs, so to speak. And obviously, um, uh, Israel is already leaders in computer vision and, and, and artificial intelligence, which are two underpinning technologies that are probably the most important set of ingredients that you'd put into any recipe that can help an ag tech. So, I mean, we're so excited about Israel. We, we actually have signed uh, an agreement with the Israel uh, Innovation Authority so that any Israeli company, or at least a company who has IP owned in Israel, uh, that if they work with Syngenta on a pilot or a proof of concept anywhere in the world, um, they can apply for um, funding support from the Israeli Innovation Authority. So, you know, we, we've been really pleased with the, the ecosystems. And, and if you look around the world, it's probably Brazil, um, the U.S. and Israel, and then maybe India is starting to come in as the number fourth sort of hotbed of, of, of ag tech startups, and then maybe Australia is fifth. But Israel just brings that, I think, culture uh, as well as um, just the innovation, which I think is something that is, is really needed in agriculture. Super interesting. So just to, to um, end off with this question, if you were to establish a startup in AgTech today, what problems would you be seeking to solve? Yeah, I probably would focus on sustainability or regenerative farming. Um, I think yield is something that probably most companies automatically move to, but you know you're you're starting to reach the point where a lot of the seeds uh, they're already getting close to their full genetic potential. So I think uh, over time, I think ag tech will help you move from the sort of you know trying to get average yields up and profitability, which are the two things that I think are are, are continue to be well served, but. But it really is managing the variability of the field to try to manage the sustainability footprint of the field. And so when you look at things like soil health, carbon sequestration, I mean, these are pretty complex topics where the data is relatively yeah. hard to get. But if you can crack the code of, of what's happening at the, the geobiophysical level, you know, you can unlock an amazing amount of insight into what's going on in that field. And, and you, you've probably heard the equation genetics by uh, environmental by management practices, G by E by M is sort of the string theory of ag. And if you can solve and, and, and elucidate a number of the, the co-variables of that equation, you really can unlock a number of mysteries of agriculture that, that really allow us to better understand 
how to produce uh, more food uh, with less inputs, uh, more profitably, and in a way that manages biodiversity and soil health in the long term better. So I think I'd be looking in the areas of regenerative uh, and sustainable farming um, with an angle around soil health. Excellent. It's been very insightful. Thank you very much, Greg, for being with us today. And uh, we look forward to seeing more of Syngenta and more partnerships and investments than ever before. And wishing you a great day. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.